Okay, so this is your setup for uh, Faraday's uh, and Lance's law experiment. Here we have a metal rod that's holding a rotary sensor uh, to which we have connected a induction wand that's being placed in between the magnets here. Uh, please don't change the magnet separation here because we want to have uh, a certain strength of the magnetic field. In addition to that, the rotary sensor is connected to the PASCO interface here uh, to record the angular displacement and then to the channel A of the uh, PASCO interface, we have a voltage sensor which will be used to uh, monitor the induced uh, voltage. Uh, in addition to this, we have a um, resistor that will be connected by your TA here uh, behind uh, these two wires to create a load. Okay, so the first thing when you're ready to take the data, you're going to go to the computer and then you're going to log in to the student station. We throw that. And then when you are in the student station, you're going to open first scope. And then you are going to press here on record. So right now what you have, your induction wand is not moving. So then you have a continuous straight line here. Once you start moving induction, uh, induction wand, you will see that you will see these peaks on the voltage. And uh, then you're going to proceed with instructions in the laboratory manual to and make your observations. So aside from looking at what's going on on the screen, you should look for the, the equation for induced DMF and change in flux and make your observations uh, based, on, uh, based on those two combined. Okay, so now when you're done with all the steps with the scope, you're going to click here on stop and then you're going to close the program. And then when it, uh, when it asks you to save, you're going to discard. You're not going to save anything. So now when you're ready to actually collect the data, after closing the scope, you're going to open the uh, Faraday's Law Experiment file. So note here that you have uh, four pages. First one is the voltage, to, uh, named voltage, that will give you the induced voltage versus time. Second one is angular position, that will give you angular position in degrees as a function of time. Uh, and this is for the pendulum swinging in and out of the magnetic field. Here you will insert your uh, times and the angular displacement for the no load data and obtain the graph. And then here you have the uh, same thing for the load data. You will insert the time and the angular displacement and um, the graph will appear in this area here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is with this load disconnected, you're going to swing the uh, pendulum in and out of the magnetic field and have it move slowly. Okay, so uh, this may be too fast, but I'm gonna show you on the screen how that will actually look like. So you are on the first page, it says voltage. You're going to click on the record and then you're going to scale here. So this is moving slowly. So then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kick it in and out and then you're going to stop. So what do you have here? You have a positive peak and then you have a negative peak for the uh, induced voltage. How you're going to read these values? You're going to uh, come in here, take this um, tool that shows the coordinates, bring the tool to the top here. When it changes the color, you get the uh, voltage. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the first one on the bottom here. Uh, bring it in and then it will show you the uh, it will show you the voltage. Okay, let me see another tool. 
bring it up here and then you have a positive voltage and negative voltage one thing that you shouldn't do is when you click record here and then if you have this so i'm going to stop here and show you and then i'm going to scale if you have a device pegging at point one amp uh, at the point one uh, volts, then your uh, pendulum is moving way too fast. And then you need to repeat your data uh, collection. Okay, so here, when you click on here, you can delete all runs or you can delete to run number two. In my case, it's going to be deleted. To print this graph, you're going to click here on annotate and then type your names and then uh, to print a graph, you're going to click on File, Print Preview. Then you're going to select here that you want your page to be in the landscape mode. So this, that's this, this icon here. So you have your preview of the page in the uh, landscape mode. And then you're going to click on Printer. And then uh, select this uh, ET9C and so on printer. And then um, you're going to click to print. So this is a page number one. Let me, before I go on the click, so this is a page number one. Then you have two, three, four pages, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to click on print here. This is the printer that you want to select. And then you're going to click pages one to one. This way we don't waste the paper. And then you're going to print the number of the pages for each person uh, that is um, in your group. And then when you click print, it will... Uh, go over there okay so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to in the next part of the experiment you're going to observe the angular position as a function of time so what is important here to do it is important that you're going you're going to click on record and then you're going to displace this from the uh, minimum from the lowest position and then you are going to observe as your amplitude uh, changes and you're going to record the data for 30 seconds so first you're going to do that by let me stop this first you're going to do that by sliding the magnet out and then you're going to bring the magnet in make sure that your pendulum is going is moving in between the two magnets so the most important thing to do is to select, uh, to start recording the data. Then you're going to displace this. And then when you observe your data here, everything will be symmetric around the x-axis. The data that you will need for the, uh, with the magnet is the one that you're going to record in a uh, table for the no load uh, graph. And then uh, you will read these peaks, same as before. You're going to use this tool, read the first one, skip two, read the second one, skip two, read the third one. You don't alternate between positive and negative. You're just going to read on the positive side. I have here this discontinuity in data because I was playing with it to show you how it looks like. Okay, so once you're done with that and you have your data uh, written in the table, the next thing you're going to do, I'm going to delete uh, all the data runs. I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to delete all data runs. Then what you're going to do is you're going to ask your TA to connect the load in between here and between these two terminals. So basically how this is done, they're going to disconnect these wires. I'm sorry, I only have one hand here. And then they're going to connect them like this. 
and then bring them back to the panel. So now what happens is in the first part, you had a circuit that connected consistent of this um, pendulum that has a, resist a coil with a resistance of four ohms that was connected in series with a million ohm resistor here. But now what you have, same like on your uh, drawing of the circuit in the laboratory manual, you have million ohms here and then what you have here is a 4 ohm resistor and this 4 ohm resistor and the million ohms are connected in parallel so you have to calculate equivalent resistance between those two parallel and then which is going to give you around 4 ohms and then that is in series with the 4 ohm resistance of the uh, of this induction wand here okay so then to uh collect the data first you are going to click here on record. You're going to be back on the voltage. You're going to click on record, and then you're going to tip this wand. And then you can see here, I'm pegging on 0.1 volts, so that's not good. I'm going to delete, and then I'm going to click on record again. And then I'm just going to slightly tip it. And then I'm going to stop. So you can click here on this first icon to enlarge your graph. Or you don't have to. And you can see you have these two peaks. Let's scale the graph so I have these two peaks of negative 0.44 volts and a positive 0.26 volts and you can see now because I have this load I am going to have a larger dumping constant my uh, wand is going to stop faster okay so this you're going to use this data again annotate your graph print for each member of the group and then in the next part, you're going to observe the uh, angular displacement. So you're going to click here on record. And then again, what you're going to do is you're going to take this wand and let it go. And then you're going to see how your angular displacement is damping and coming to a stop really fast. So you can't record more like the, than like 20 seconds of the data. So we're going to stop this. So now when you record, read your data for the table with the uh, load, you're going to read the data for, um, for each peak. So first one, second one, third, fourth, fifth, you can read small ones here. Okay. So once that is done, then you're going to go in your uh, no load data and graph uh, window page then you're going to insert from your table from your laboratory manuals values for the times and values for the corresponding the uh, corresponding angular displacements you're going to get your data points plotted here on the graph and then to fit them you're going to click here on um, this drop on this drop down arrow uh, arrow and then you are going to select a base 10 exponential fit. And what's that going to give you is going to give you a value for the B, which is going to be your dumping constant. It's going to give you a value for A, which is your amplitude zero, and it's going to give you a value for the constant C. Then you're going to, uh, the laboratory manual does not say print this graph, but I would love if the students would actually print this graph so you have it so you can study for the exam uh, for the final, because this is going to be on the final. And then similarly, you're going to uh, move to the fourth page and do insert your times from the table from the laboratory manual, insert your angular displacements, the uh, same thing, graph, and then click and select base 10 exponential uh, fit. 
and then it will give you the B is going to be damping constant. The B here is a damping constant, it has units to one over second and tells you how fast these oscillations are going to come to a stop. Uh, means that the large uh, current is going to be induced due to the Lenz's law in a wand and that's what's causing this wand to stop moving. Okay, when you do the printing, one more time, file, print preview, make sure that this page is set to the landscape view and then when you do the uh, print, you're going to select pages. So first page is voltage, second page angular position, third page is no load and fourth page is the load data. Okay, so once you're done with everything, you are going to close the window and click on the discard and then you're going to log out of the student account. And your TA will have to take this thing out. Please don't do that on your own. Ask your TA to come and, and fix this for you. Okay, that's all.